and welcome to Geeky Girls Knit. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Damaris, also known as Damaris Tash a bit weird. And we're glad to have you today. Happy New Year! It's 2013. Yes, it is. Ta-da! Are you excited? Sure. It might snow. But not a lot. No, it never snows a lot here. Well, this is um, our first episode of the new year. Today is Wednesday, January the 2nd, 2013, and this is episode 19 of Geeky Girls Knit. We're glad to have you here. We say a big hello to um, all of our returning viewers. Thanks for coming back week after week, and we say welcome to any new viewers we have. We're glad to have you, and I think we're ready to get started. Yep. All right, here we go. And now we're going to talk about what's on our needles. What's on your needles, Mare? I still have socks. Still. You made a little progress. A little. She's been enamored with her new Kindle this week. And she'll talk about that in Yummies. But we're starting back to school tomorrow. So that means art time, which means knitting. Right? Yeah. So, that means... What? That you'll get some more done on them. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Okay. And you're waiting for your sweater yarn to come in? Still. Hopefully, now that it's the new year, it'll come in. Yes. But in the meantime, socks. Yay. When you finish those socks, you will be so happy to have warm, cozy pink socks. I already have warm, cozy rainbow socks. But now you'll have two pair of warm, cozy socks. One rainbow, one pink. This is the, um, we didn't even say what kind of, what these socks were. This is the two-at-a-time toe-up sock pattern from our local yarn shop, Yarnies. And it's, uh, what's the yarn? I have no idea. It's okay, I wrote it down. It's Knit Picks Brava Sport in Rouge. Thanks. And you're on US 4's 3.5 millimeter needles. Yes. So hold them up so they can see them. Mm. No, this, your socks. I did. Well, hold them up again. There they are. There you go. All right. I was hoping to have these finished for today, but I did not quite make it. These are my mixed match leftover socks that I'm using leftover yarn to finish or to uh, to knit with. Um, so they are on. I'm using the same sock pattern that Damaris is using. These are on US ones, 2.25 millimeters, and the yarn that I'm using is the Vice Sockalicious in the Amazingly Amy, and uh, the Regia Garden Effects in Flower Garden which is pinks and purples and greens. I am all the way to the ribbing. I'm just now starting the ribbing. The cuff. The cuff, the ribbing. Yes, and that's what's called cuff. But it's also ribbing. But it's called the cuff. <laughs> okay, yes. Yes, dear. <laughs> so I'm doing the cuff, which is ribbing. I am going to do knit one through the back loop pearl one ribbing though instead of traditional knit one pearl one ribbing because I've done that on a couple of pairs of socks now and I like that and then um, I think I'm going to bind off using Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off because I've used that recently and really liked it so um, these socks will be done next week for next week's podcast um, and I used every single bit of of the regia I had left and then now this may be like common knowledge to the rest of the knitting world but this was totally mind-blowing to me okay so I'm knitting these socks too at the same time and so since my yarn balls are so small I just tucked them down into the sock and have been knitting them that way rather than having them in a project bag and having to turn the project bag counterclock 
clockwise or counterclockwise or whichever way you turn it um, so that the yarns don't get tangled. So my yarn balls are like down in my socks, which makes it really handy. So I have two little balls this size left to do the cuff and the bind off, which I'm sure I will have plenty. Um, I typically do about a 12 row cuff, but depending on how much yarn I have, when I get to that point, I may do a few extra rows just to use up the yarn. And that's what's on my needles. What's next? Hats and lots of them. Lots of gifts coming up. All right, on to the next section. Now it's time for finished objects. We don't have any. I'm hanging my head in shame. Should I do that too? Yes. Sorry. I tried. I tried really hard to get these done. They'll be done for next week. We will have at least one finished object next week. Hopefully more than one, because I'm hoping that these hats that I'm fixing to cast on after I finish these socks are going to go fairly quickly. So, tune in next week for hopeful finished objects. However, um, I can say in this segment, we did post project pictures on our Ravelry pages. Yes. So, I posted pictures of... My All the Shades of Truth, um, Damaris modeled it for me, and I also took some just like hanging it on the fence. I also posted pictures of the Doctor Who bow tie necklace that I did. You posted pictures of my colorful hat and my fingerless gloves. Your colorful hat was the... Um, I don't remember what it was called. I can't remember what it's called either. It was... We don't have to look it up. Well, now it's going to bother me. I've got Ravelry right here. Mm. I'm looking. Ravelry, Ravelry, Ravelry. Where are we? Let's see. Da, 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 da. See, we tend to do, we tend to post project pic pictures in batches because we tend to wait until we have several projects done. Oops, I just typed on, tapped on your queue instead of your projects. Um, okay, so you posted pictures of... Where's your hat? Oh, it's down there. The This Must Be What Going Mad Feels Like hat. That wasn't the name of the pattern. That's what you named it. You also posted pictures of your Joan H. Watson Army Woman fingerless gloves. They're awesome. And you posted pictures of Katie's headband. Yes. Well, one picture. Did she not send you the picture with her wearing it? No. Oh, I thought she was going to send you a picture of her wearing it. No. Okay. So anyway, so that's kind of um, finished objects that we actually posted the project pictures. So pop on over to our Ravelry pages and you can see finished projects. And with that, let's go to the next segment. And now it's time for my very favorite part of Geeky Girls Knit. Yummies! Yummies are our current favorite things or things that make us happy or new things we've gotten this week or just what's, what makes us happy. Sometimes they're food. Damaris thinks they should be only be food if they're called yummies, but I say no. And I won. I'm the mama. I overruled. So Damaris, what's yummy this week? Hold on. If you find it, then it has to load. She's getting it. You could talk about that. That's over. Oh, there you go. You got it? Yeah, it only takes a bit to load. Sorry, we weren't quite prepared. Oops. Da 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 da. Oh, here we go. Angry Birds. Yay! So this is your new Kindle? Yes. Also, I have... I have... Where is it? That she got for Christmas. We talked about it last week, but she hadn't gotten it yet. Monopoly. So this is what's been taking up her knitting time this week, is um, playing things on her Kindle. <laughs> 
-hmm. and it makes you happy. Yeah. <laughs> what else is yummy this week? Yeah, I have cabin pressure on there. I've been listening to it every day. I thought we were going to talk about that in a little while. Oh, yeah. But I was just saying, I have cabin pressure on my carousel. Okay. Um, what else is yummy? Something literally yummy. Hot chocolate. What kind of hot chocolate? Dark hot chocolate. Dark chocolate hot chocolate. That's redundant. Hot dark chocolate. Dark hot chocolate. Never ever let it cool. From Polar Express? Yes. I'm liking the hot chocolate too. Russ came home the other day with a couple boxes of hot chocolate that is dark chocolate, which is our. We, we really. We love pretty much any kind of chocolate. We like dark chocolate. But we really like dark chocolate. And he came home with hot chocolate that is dark chocolate. So that made us all happy. Dark hot chocolate. What else is yummy this week, Damaris? Um, it's not literally yummy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have this document that has lots of bullet points. Seriously, she knows how many bullet points it has because I've shown it because I've shown it to her, and it is a document. I already said that. What's it a document of? with bullet points about cosplay. Okay, so explain what cosplay is for people who do not know. It it pretty much means costume, but cosplay sounds cooler. So, what are what is on these lists of bullet points? Um things needed for certain cosplays. Okay. So, what cosplays are you interested in doing? Lots of them. Okay, so tell us about a few of them. Um, female John Watson. Okay, which, which is why I'm knitting that. Which is why I'm going to knit that sweater. The the uh, cabled. Yes. Sweater. And um. And what else would you need to go with this female John Watson? Jeans. Um, I don't know what type of shoes they are. Um. But you can substitute brown ankle high boots, um, a silver cane, and that's pretty much it. That's the easiest one on my list. Okay, what other one? What other, what are some other ones that are harder to do? Oh, I have a really hard one, and it's not a character or anything. It's two two one B personified, which is from BBC Sherlock. Yes, and. It's a costume based off what is in 221B. Like, there's a pattern for the wallpaper on one of their walls, and I found a skirt pattern, and, I was, and I'm thinking about. I'm either going to. Uh, 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 yeah. There was something in that hot chocolate. <laughs> uh, darkness. It's darkness in the hot chocolate. Uh oh. Should I be worried? <laughs> Um, um, there's a pattern for the wallpaper that's on one of their walls, and I found a skirt pattern. I'm going to knit a skirt to go with it. And while looking around Etsy, I'm, I've been trying to find a pair of, of high tops that have silhouettes of Sherlock and John. And I found one, but one of them sold, and the other one is $40 with 10, with uh, twenty dollar shipping. Yikes! That's a high shipping. Yeah. Are they coming from overseas? Mm-hmm. That's why. Oops! I dropped a stitch. And yeah, it's just that one is my most difficult one that I'm working on, and it's original-ish. I have never seen anyone dress up like two two one B, so I assume it's original. So you have just been like searching for ideas of ways to do this, whether it's by knitting items mm -hmm. or purchasing items that would go with the, the costumes. Mm -hmm. And I found lots of patterns for things I could do. Like a female Arthur Shappy, he wears a vest, and it's either a tie or an ascot, and I found 
patterns for all three of those of those things. Cool. Yeah. So she has uh, been creative. She has been very creative. <laughs> Which is kind of a good segue into one of my yummies for this week. Um, last year, about this time, um, I was um, introduced to a concept of um, choosing a word as a theme for the year. And I'm getting <laughs> lots of emails. I don't know why. Um, of picking a, a, a word as your theme for the year versus picking resolutions. So my word for last year was um, a Greek word, Eucharisteo, which literally means um, grace, thanksgiving, and joy. So um, last year I really focused on looking for the everyday joys, thanksgivings, um, things I could be grateful for and kept a list. This was as part, I was introduced to this idea by a blogger and author, Ann Voskamp, who wrote the book 1,000 Gifts, a, um, a Dare to Live Fully Right Where You Are, which is an amazing book, one of my top books ever um, that I would highly recommend anybody read. Um, so Eucharisteo was my word for last year. Well, my word for this year is create and I blogged a little bit about it on my blog a couple of days ago um, we'll put a link to my blog in the show notes but it's the almonds.com t-h-e-a-l-m-o-n-s dot com slash c-c blog um, so I wrote about picking my word a couple days ago and then yesterday I wrote about some ideas for making create happen in 2013 so some of my thoughts that I'm gonna do I'm looking at okay so I got my Kindle as well this is the oh it's upside down this is the new Kindle Fire HD and I'm in love with it it is amazing and um, so I've got my blog post pulled up on my Kindle so that I didn't have to write out all these um, goals that I had already written about. So one of my goals is going to be to design and publish at least six knitting patterns this year. And whether that means um, submitting them to be published in a knitting magazine or online or self-publishing them, um, I want to try to do at least six patterns this year. Um, She's clicking with her knitting needles on stuff. Um, another goal is to knit enough pairs of socks that I can stop wearing store-bought socks. I, ha I have one, two, three, four. I think I have five pairs of socks. The ones on my needles will make six. But I have some socks that I wear for around the house and some socks that I wear for being out. So I need more than seven pair if that makes sense. Um, what I wrote about it on my blog was that they're just so much more comfortable to me and I love looking down and knowing that I um, knitted all those stitches. That makes me happy. Um, in 2012, I knitted my first sweater, which was the Ruby's Bookstore sweater. It was a short sleeve uh, open cardigan. And so this year I want to knit my second sweater ever. Um, I've got a bunch of sweaters in my Ravelry queue, and I don't know which one I'm going to do yet. I'm thinking long sleeve since I've done the short sleeve, um, and so we'll see. Uh, another idea is to knit at least six preemie hats for charity. When I uh, was working as a hospital chaplain, one of my primary units was the NICU unit for the, for the little, little preemie babies. Um, and I have a pattern that I designed that's a freebie on Ravelry for a top-down preemie hat. Um, so I want to knit at least six hats this year to donate to charity, whether from that pattern or another pattern I design. Um, another one was consistently journal. I used to journal quite often, and it kind of went by the wayside. And a few weeks ago, I started journaling again, and so I want to try to journal at least three times a week. It's really I like to journal, too, yep. sometimes. It's really relaxing and peaceful for me to be able to just kind of get those thoughts out on paper, even if it's just a couple sentences. 
So um, I'm going to do that. And then also this year I am going to keep up the list that I had last year, and I, I had one in 2011 as well, um, of the, the Eucharisteo gifts, joys, thanksgivings that I find in everyday life. My list from the past two years combined is now over 1,600 items. Um, and so I'm going to add to that again this year, and my goal is to have at least 1,000 um, new ones this year. Although some of them are repeats, like I'm not real um, persnickety about looking back through the list and saying, oh, well, I said that back in May of 2011, so I can't say it today. So there are repeats on my list, some of them fairly often because things happen and there's, you know, I, I think the important thing is just finding those gratitudes in everyday life and keeping a record of them to look back over. So that is one of my yummies. My other yummy is I won a giveaway from knitculture.com, which is in Los Angeles, California. Their website, uh, well, like I said, is knitculture.com. And what I won was three, these are not really skeins. What are they? They're not balls. really balls. They're not really balls either. Three things. Hanks? No, not Hank. Whatever these are. They're 50 grams um, of yarn, uh, which is 100, about 147 yards each of Rowan Baby Merino Silk DK um, in the colorway Bluebird. These are 66% Merino Superwash Wool and 34% Tusa silk, I guess is how you say it. T U S S A H. So it's this beautiful heathered blue. And like I said, I got three. Bless you. I got three, um, whatever these are, of it. Um, and I also got this pattern book, which is a Rowan pattern book called Just Baby. 19 Designs for Babies by Lisa Richardson. And I'm just going to show you four of them that I really think are adorable. This is the Dickens sweater. Like Charles? I think so, because, like, there are names. Um, there's another name somewhere that was, like, there's Potter. <laughs> like, I think, like, Beatrix. Be Beatrice. Beatrice Potter. Beatrix. Beatrix. Um, okay, now this is called the Blyton Blanket, which I think is really cute. Uh, everything in here is adorable, but I just picked four out to show you. This is uh, more for like a toddler age. Doll. Doll. D-A-H-L. Oh, oops. Sorry, I almost dropped it. Doll, D-A-H-L sweater. Like Ronald. For a little girl. And then the last one I want to show you is, this one is called Bond. And Nesbitt. Well, no, the blanket is Nesbitt. Oh. I think the sweater is Bond. But I like the blanket, too, so the Nesbitt blanket. I think the police box in it is so cute. It's hard to see that sweater. There's a better picture of the sweater. It's actually a telephone box. It's a oh. That's a telephone box. I, I meant to say telephone, and I say police. Anyway, so uh, there's, and there's lots more patterns in here. They're all written for the Baby Merino Silk DK, but obviously you could um, use different yarns. Use different yarns. Um, I, I admit... I, I knit quite a bit of baby items as gifts, um, and I know that I have one friend this, that's having a baby this year, and another one that is hoping to have a baby this year, so I quite possibly will use some of the patterns out of this to um, knit some baby gifts. So thank you so much to, um, to knitculture.com for this giveaway. I'm try I was trying to see if it said how much this pattern book cost, but
but I don't see it anywhere. Is it on the... No. Well, it's from Rowan. Uh, their website is knitrowan.com, and it's called, again, Just Baby, 19 Designs for Babies by Lisa Richardson. So check it out if you are interested in baby knitting. And that's our yummies. Now we're going to talk about what books we're reading and what TV we're watching. I have The Complete Works of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle for free. So we'll put a link to this in the show notes, but it is... I, I knew Demers wanted to read it, so I started looking um, online on Amazon once we um, got the Kindles, and... I was finding like the books individually and then happened across this one and it has all four novels and all of the collections of short stories. So everything all in this one book and it was free. So we instantly downloaded it and um, that's going to be her first. Yes, I'm going to read it. I'm going to start reading A Study in Scarlet sometime. Tomorrow for school. Or today. Or today. That's a good idea, too. I might read it before I go. I might read some of it before I go to bed. That is a great idea. Well, I just finished last night, and I think I mentioned this last week, but it was such a good book that I'm mentioning it again. Oops. There we go. <laughs> this is called A Year of Biblical Womanhood, How a Liberated Woman Found Herself Sitting on Her Roof, Covering Her Head and Calling Her Husband Master by Rachel Held Evans. And what she did was she took a year's time and looked at different uh, things in the Bible that were instructions for how a woman should live and, ha and looked at them um, and lived out some of them and investigated things like cultural norms at the time, etc. It was just a phenomenal book. Um, she goes through gentleness, domesticity, obedience, valor, beauty, modesty, purity, fertility, submission, justice, silence, and grace. And it was just a phenomenal book. I, I'm, I was already a big fan of Rachel, uh, having read some of her other books and also reading her stuff online on her blog. Um, but this made me even more of a fan. Um, she is, th this is, I would recommend this book very highly. In fact, Russ and Damaris are planning to read it as well. Yes. So um, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. Um, and what's next for me? Um, I might read Sherlock along with Damaris, but I also read other stuff at the same time. So, um, I'm thinking, but I'm thinking, I, it's been a, I, I never, to my recollection, recollection, read all of the Sherlock books anyway. Um, but, uh, it, the ones that I did read, it's been a long time. So I'm thinking I might read those with her. Um, as she's reading them. So, that's what we're reading. Now, Damaris? Yes? It has been such an active television week. I know, right? No. There has been absolutely nothing on Nada. television. None of the shows that we watch... Zilch! ...have been on this week. At all. Zero. One of them starts back tonight, uh, and Demers doesn't, even, Demers doesn't watch it, Law and Order, uh, Special Victims Unit, comes back on tonight. And then tomorrow, we start back with Person of Interest in Elementary. So things are starting back up again, but this week was zilch. So what did we do to fill our time when there was no new television on? We watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer and stayed up until midnight on New Year's Eve watching Series 4 of Merlin. Yes. And also Serenity and Firefly. Yes. Serenity is the most depressing movie in the verse. Yes. So, we randomly discovered 
last week that series five, which is the final series of Merlin, I can't deal, is starting on American television. Sci-fi. On Sci-fi on Friday night. No, for Siffy. Siffy. I don't like their new name. What the way they spell it? S Y F Y. S C I F I is short for science fiction. Siffy is short for something. Anyway. But it's starting on Sci-Fi this Friday, uh, January the 4th. <laughs> Sorry, that was the doorknob. Okay. <laughs> Let me get my heart back in my chest here. <laughs> We're sitting in front of a door. And this is the doorknob. Right there. And the chair caught on the doorknob when she moved. <laughs> Bad doorknob. Whew. <laughs> okay, so Merlin's coming back on Friday. Woo! The doorknob was excited. Apparently so. Um, however, it had been a while since we watched Series 4, and so uh, it was available on Netflix streaming, so we streamed the entire Series 4 in, like, two and a half days. We stayed up till midnight watching it on New Year's Eve. Yes, we finished it on New Year's Eve. And then, like Damaris said, we have been, she and I, and Russ, when he's home, have been watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Apparently, my dad has watched some of this. I did not know this. He knew who some of the characters were. I did not know this. It's been kind of funny to see some of the characters that we know from other shows. Um, Anthony Head. Who, uh, who plays Uther in Merlin. And her shipwright in Kevin Fresher. He's it, afraid of sheep. Is, um... Rupert Giles, the librarian. On Buffy. And he's awesome. Also, um, Booth. What's his real name? David Borean. Is that how you say it? Boreans. 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 Who plays Angel on Buffy is also Booth from Bones, which we also watch. We love Bones. Um, and then last night... We, okay, we had watched Firefly and Serenity before, but we had been re-watching it kind of in our spare time. I wanted to. So we watched the last episode of Firefly. Objects in Space. And then watched Serenity the movie last night again. It was so depressing. I had forgotten how depressing that movie is <laughs> and how many people die. I was like crying at the end of it. Oh, okay. Coming back on Monday, January the 7th, Bunheads will be back on ABC Family. We've been without it for a few months now, and it is coming back on Monday, so we're excited. If you're a fellow Bunheads fan, um, I lead the Bunheads group on Ravelry, so come join us. Wait, hold on, I want to say this. Bing bong. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all of MJ and Air, I would like to tell you that Cabin Pressure is returning on Wednesday, the 9th of January, 2013, at 12.30 Central Standard Time, 6.30 British Standard Time. Thank you. Bing bong. So obviously Damaris <laughs> is super excited, I'm excited too, that Cabin Pressure is coming back, Series 4 of Cabin Pressure, which... Starting with Timbuktu. Which has Benedict Cumberbatch from BBC Sherlock in it. So we will link to that um, of where you can listen to it for free. And live. And live. I need the link to the live. I have it. Uh, but we'll put that in the show notes. So that's what we've been reading and watching this week when there has been no new television on. We've been kind of replaying, rewatching old stuff. All right. On to the next segment. And now... It's trivia time. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> she said, I'm going to keep a serious face. Yes. I knew it wouldn't last. Here you go. So um, last week we announced the winner of our six-week trivia challenge, and it was Jordy Bear 614 And I sent her her prize, which was a copy of my striations shawl pattern. And um, she was very excited, and so congratulations again to her. So we are going to start a new trivia challenge. There were some people who were interested in doing it again. So this is, today starts the beginning of the new challenge. You ready for what it's called? What's it called? It's called, <laughs> come on, you got to be serious. <laughs> it's called Eight Weeks, Eight Questions, One Winner. <laughs> it's like the Hunger Games. You're all going to die. <laughs> if you don't win, sorry, you're going to die. <laughs> Not really. 
This is the eight week, eight questions, one winner trivia challenge. It sounds so dramatic and cheesy. It does, but it's funny. <laughs> so, it will be starting today, January the 2nd. The last question will be on February the 20th, and then we will announce the winner the following week, which will be February 27th, I'm assuming. Yes. There's a calendar back there. <laughs> February 27th, we'll announce the winner. Um, we're going to try to, today's question is another quote question, kind of like we did uh, for the six-week challenge, but we're going to try to come up with some questions where there are multiple answers so that you could, in, in, uh, you could uh, end up with more than one entry in a week. So look for that. Hopefully next week we, we kind of pulled this trivia challenge together in the last little bit before we recorded, so we didn't have as much time to think it out. So we'll hopefully be able to do that this week. Um, if you know the answer, do not, do not, do not post it on the Facebook page or on the Ravelry page, or our Ravelry group. You need to either email it to us at geekygirlsknit at thealmonds.com or private message it to me on Ravelry to Java Pearl, and there will be links for that. Um, but if you post it on the Facebook page or on the Ravelry group page, it'll be disqualified, and I'll have to delete it so that everybody has a fair chance. Um, so here is today's question. We need to know what the name of this show is and what the episode name is and who are the two people talking. So the name of the show, the name of the episode, and who are the two people talking. And Damaris is going to start with the first half of it. First officer leaves through nearest exit. Captain writes, Captain, on forehead with lipstick, Don's cap enters cabin. In unlikely event of Captain non-recognition, Captain Doff's cap gestures to lipstick inscription. <laughs> That's it. Let, let's do it one more time. First officer leaves through nearest exit. Captain writes, Captain, on forehead with lipstick, Don's cap enters cabin. In unlikely event of Captain non-recognition, Captain Doff's cap gestures to lipstick inscription. So if you know the name of the show, the name of the episode, and the two people who said that quote, get it sent to us. Deadline will be next Wednesday the 9th <laughs> at noon. Central, central, are we Central Standard Time or Central Daylight Time now? Yes. Central Time, whatever it is, I think Standard. I don't know. Are the British on Standard Time too? I have no idea. I know not of the British. Central Time, at noon on Wednesday, uh, is when it will will be the cutoff because then we record after that. So we need to have all the entries in. We so, should have known that next Wednesday was the ninth because that's when cabin pressure comes back. <laughs> Face plant. <laughs> all right. So if you know the answer, send us your answer, and that's trivia. And that's a wrap for episode 19 of Geeky Girls Knit. I still have brown lipstick. <laughs> Damaris was finishing her hot chocolate, so she's got brown lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We've uh, enjoyed making this episode. It, it was longer than we expected with not having any new TV, but I guess we stretched out some of the other segments to make it kind of be a normal length. Um, to get in contact with us, um, if you go to our website, Geeky Girls Knit, G E E K Y G I R L S K N I T dot blogspot dot com. There are links there to um, everything. Of course, our show notes are all there, but there's also links to our Twitter, Facebook, Ravelry Group, Blip TV, Blip TV iTunes, YouTube, as well as how to find us individually on Ravelry. Um, and. Uh, also how to email us. So that's the best place to find everything. Um, our Ravelry group is kind of where we converse the most with people. So please come join our Ravelry group. We'd love to talk with you. Um, we'd love for you to share your projects. Um, talk to us about what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're knitting, what you're whatever. Watcher. We like to talk. <laughs> so come join us. Thanks for joining us for this first episode of the new year. Happy 2013. We'll see you next week. Happy knitting. Peace. Bye. <laughs>